Just a tiny bit of background on me. I spent uh, the better part of 25 years in a professional services firm, uh, including most of that as a partner. And I've now spent the last 20 years coaching people in and around uh, professional services firms. So um, that's where I'm coming to this from. Um, <clears throat> I came across an expression uh, a few weeks ago uh, of something called the Corona Stone which those uh, fitness and health conscious friends of mine told me was the pounds that most of us have been piling on during the lockdown without really noticing. Uh, and my question really to you today is, has your firm put on a Corona stone, perhaps without noticing it during lockdown? And if so, what might you do about that? Um, I'm pretty clear, both from my own experience and from talking to all the people I talk to now, that. It's a key part of every uh, business leader, every firm leader, to keep an eye on the right weight for their firm, the right shape, the right weight. And from time to time, we avoid getting on the scales and having a look and seeing uh, whether we are where we think we are. But every now and again, I think we should do it. And part of this retuning idea that Richard's uh, bringing to you all uh, in this new episode I think could involve putting your firm on the scales and, and seeing how it sits. And by that, I mean things like the balance between your fee earning and perhaps your non-fee earning staff, the shape of the pyramid that you've got at the top of which you're looking for your new partners. Uh, and of course, critically, the shape of your partnership group itself, the demographic spread across it uh, and who you've got coming in, who you've got in the middle, who you've got perhaps beginning to look to retirement and whether they will or not. Now, different firms will have different ideas about what's right for them, uh, but we all should have a view about it. Uh, one of the key things I think also is that your people can see that your firm provides opportunities for growth, development and promotion. One of the key motivators that we see and hear about all the time in the people we're, we're working with is, where can I go in this place? What, what opportunities does it present for me? And if the room ahead looks a bit clogged or crowded, that can be quite a strong reason why people leave and sometimes why the wrong people leave. Because again, this thing about right shaping is not just having the right numbers of people, but having the right people stay and, dare I say it, the right people uh, leave. Um, so we're all operating an, an escalator. And that escalator in normal times works pretty well because there is a natural level of staff turnover. Uh, there are promotions, there are retirements, the, 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 the process works. And on the whole, that process has begun to work better in the last few years, I think, than it did. One of the few benefits, I think, that came out of the global financial crisis was that a lot of people managing their teams and their people got better at what one might call actively managing levels and numbers of people, rather than perhaps the old school that I was brought up with, where you just sort of expected it to happen. Many more honest conversations take place, many more conversations taking an active interest in people's careers, both positively and sometimes less so, but in order to help maintain the shape and, and flow of the firm. Now, COVID has thrown quite a few spanners in the works of this escalator. It's not working as smoothly as it did. All sorts of things have gone on, um, hiring freezes, uh, investment collapses leading to pension pots looking much smaller and people thinking whoops I, I can't retire for another few years when i thought perhaps i might be going to uh, promotions are being put on hold remote working there's been quite a lot of talk about that this morning already and that is making those really important honest conversations regular conversations catch-ups less easy and people while they're managing in a crisis as they have been duck some of these things. They slip down the agenda. Some of the important, necessary, but perhaps not vital and urgent issues are, are slipping off the agenda. Now, the effect of all this, I think, has been to slow down the escalator and clog up the works, probably, for a lot of firms. Were they, therefore, now to get on the scales again and have a good look at themselves, I think you might find that the shape isn't where it might be. And that even before you start looking at downturns in work. 
so I think it's a very good time for us all to be having a careful look at uh, shape and, and what we would like to be. Now, by like to be, again, just to repeat the point, this isn't just about overall payroll. This isn't just numbers. This is about having the right talents and energies and numbers of people in the right places, uh, all up and down the firm and in the front office and in the back office. Now, uh, in, in some firms, this is different depending on size, but it's a point that I think is worth active scrutiny. And coming back to Richard's point about this is time to stop and think about strategy. This, I think, is absolutely a core element of, of strategy. Now, once you've got to the point of identifying what the size should be, what are the things you should do about it? And I think this is going to be somewhere where probably Marianne and I are going to be singing from the same sheet because there's an awful lot here about relationship and honest conversations. Having the right kind of honest conversations, making sure that your managers do speak to people honestly and openly about them and their career aspirations and their goals and where they want to go and how they think they're going to get there and charging your people with some responsibility for that then provides a platform from which conversations can take place, the result of which is you keep and promote and develop effectively the people you want to keep and promote and develop. And just as importantly, you can have a conversation without it necessarily being highly charged with those people for whom it might be right either now or soon to move on. And you can engage with them in that process and help them do that. And this is a, this is a cultural shift for many firms, but it's a really important one to try and achieve. And as a leader, it's about enabling and upskilling your managers and holding them accountable for having the conversations that you've equipped them to be able to have. Secondly, there will, of course, be some redundancies. That's going to happen. The redundancies, it used to be thought, would be ghastly and catastrophic culturally for almost all professional services firms. Again, the crisis showed that that needn't be the case. If you do them well, that doesn't have to happen. One point I'd make about redundancies is it is often tempting to look at voluntary schemes because it seems somehow kinder and gentler and easier. The problem with a voluntary scheme, of course, is that you're not the one who chooses, who goes. And again, if you're talking about right sizing, that can sometimes be less than the ideal outcome. And the third and last group I'm going to mention, where, of course, most of the cost lies, and if that's what you've got your eye on, are the partners. Now, having conversations with partners about their progression and development, again, when I was brought up in this profession, really didn't happen. Fortunately, now it is beginning to. It's happening more and it's happening better. But driving further cultural change within your partnership so that those conversations can and do take place is the solution to those sticky partners later on in their careers who are getting in the way of the younger blood that you want to give more equity points to and bring further up the ladder. So shifting that conversational skill set and that culture around it is, is the goal there. So coming back to it all, I think it is time to get on the scales, to have a look at where we are and what's going on. I completely agree with Marion that it's no good any longer to say we're waiting for afterwards. I think we've arrived at afterwards. Afterwards is what we're in now. And the uncertainties that we are facing aren't going to go away. This is going to be an uncertain world. The one certain thing I say is that if you don't get on the scales and don't have a look at yourself, you might find you've piled on some pounds that you don't want and that it's going to get increasingly hard to move them unless you start doing something about it too. So that's my thought about the Corona Stone and professional services firms.